So another one going out to the Highlander, uh, sort of partly. Uh, it's really just a summation by this point because I don't think any more responses will be of any productive value. If we continue, we'll probably just border on circular argumentation like he suggested. Uh, I've seen it happen before with these kinds of topics. But if my last video wasn't enough to seal it, then chances are nothing will. Uh, but who knows? You know, take a stab at it anyway and see what happens. Uh, so I'll just talk a bit about where exactly I perceive most people tend to drift off in different directions when it comes to this argument. Um, and even Mendem in his last, uh, his second to last extermination video said that it's both. And it just made me a little frustrated. You know, as if there's anything in my video that casts any doubt that organized religion is still part of the problem. Um, you know, so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing any of this one side versus the other type arguing that he seems to have taken away from it. All I was saying was that organization, in the name of a bad idea, is not our only problem. It's not the seed of the problem. The bad idea itself is the seed. Um, go figure. <laughs> but organized religion, for instance, is simply a byproduct of the seed when you counter in human nature. You know, the presence of which is always going to be inescapable, seeing as how any spiritual notion requires human perspective in order to exist. So those two are going to be tied. And that was really the simple gist of my last video, just trying to demonstrate the obvious danger of combining the unverifiable with this human-centric type of self-indulgence that's always going to be prevalent in the sort of undisciplined philosophies people build for themselves purely out of their own psychological bullshit need. And like I previously stated, you know, and most people just block this out for some reason, but I did state that there are types of seeds, let's just call them, that don't necessarily have to result in something ugly growing out of them. But I'm just saying, if we look throughout recorded history, the facts point to these harmless seeds being few and far between. And I also mentioned how these, you know, seeds come in all sorts of different varieties. Um, you know, the mafia and all that kind of stuff. But I think if you listen to the rhetoric of most spiritual people, and let me just say now to a Jama Flipper who seems to be under the impression that spirituality comes in trillions of different forms. So, yeah, you know, getting a hard on over being present at a Woodstock concert or something has this spiritual aspect to it. Um, anyway, the human Highlander brought up an example, which he then went on to make sure that we didn't confuse with spirituality, which kind of defeated the whole purpose of bringing it up in the first place, because I was arguing that spirituality and God belief are philosophical no-nos, and he was making a counter-argument to that. So, I mean, I have no choice but to treat his example as one backing spirituality, because uh, he argued against my anti-spirituality theory. But he did mention how there are people who have all this reverence for particular settings where they can just get away from it all. And we really have to be careful not to confuse any of this stuff with spirituality. You know, unwinding from a hectic day while enjoying a sunset or, or just relaxing in general is really no more a spiritual exercise than getting caught up in your own dream while you're dreaming. And again, I know the Highlander didn't mean for his analogy to be taken as spirituality, but he brought it up while arguing my theory, so, I mean, I do have to mention it. But let's just deal with actual spirituality and actual God belief. Beliefs inherently related to the existence of the soul and the spirit. You know, the way they're defined. So, based on observable evidence that I wish wasn't true, but it is, but the overwhelming majority of these people although they have no affiliation with any organized religion or any variation thereof, they're still taking part in a dangerous level of self-deception. They're just simply not dealing with the reality of what they are, which is just an eccentric evolved bug. And it is that kind of denial and, and self-reverence that keeps this meme of life is so good, it's worth the admission price, it's worth this, it's worth that. It keeps it fully intact. And we 
therefore keep creating unnecessary need, unnecessary life. And belief in any kind of God, you know, universal or man-like, you know, really is, you know, interchangeable with these spiritual notions of the grandness of life, in most cases, which I've observed, and I've observed plenty. No, really, the only you know, the difference with the big guy is, give or take about half the cases, you know, people think he's behind them. Yes, plenty of non-officially religious people still think God backs them, and more importantly, backs their views. And I mean, is this really that groundbreaking? The, the idea that a non-officially religious person, uh, that person's view of God, may be just as dangerous, if not more so, than a person who just so happens to attend church on a weekly basis. No, there's tons of interchangeable shifting going on here between the church wackos and the non-church wackos. But the bottom line is, when both camps are added up in total, very few individuals in those camps get by without creating unnecessary messes uh, through their core fundamental beliefs of traditional life is a gift type thinking. I mean, when you believe in the existence of intelligence that's so grand that it's capable of creating all of this, it's understandable to have this inclination to stick around and see what happens next. You know, be it in your lifetime or in the next thousand years, you know, or what have you. You would want to procreate so that humanity can see what happens next. Um, but for those of us who know that there's nothing behind the curtain, it's kind of difficult to do the keep on keeping on thing with this life thing, given the all-important suffering component, which that kind of perpetuation of life would only increase, as we see today. Um, all because the spirit is all too often driven by its curious motive of, well, what's behind the curtain? Well, we got to stick around and find out, no matter how long it takes, sort of type of bullshit. Um, but, but there's nothing on the other side, and there's plenty on this side, and that's the important thing. So until I see more people who don't go to church, swallow their spirit pride and accept the logic of this argument, to me, they may as well spend all their time up Pastor Kearney's ass for all I give a fuck, because they're just as useless to the advancement of practical logic and to the reduction of suffering anyway. So yeah, I mean, it's just basic stuff. Just like racism can have an impact without some kind of a clan organization backing it. Really, so can the false beliefs of spiritual people. So I mean, you tied in patriotism, and I never denied other forms of organized harm, harms existing out there. Um, but that alone doesn't undo the weight of the alternative. Uh, you know, but even if you look at the history of patriotism, you'll find a certain level of fervor um, well, it, it was contributed to the by the God with us type of attitude that most people tied into their country of birth and, and just to point out I don't buy into this idea that most moderates don't truly believe in God um, you know, just because they haven't thought through their belief in God doesn't mean doesn't create this lack of belief element that Gary and you suggested it does you know, if anything, them not thinking their God belief through is most likely precisely the reason why they are theists, not why they're not. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm not going to have much time to deal with the government stuff. Um, you know, you brought up the, you know, the history of governments and all that. And all I can say to that is, you know, throughout history, we didn't have the necessary technology to impose this kind of rigid accountability that we can now. You know, the polygraph examinations and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and as for the rest, I, I still come away un uncertain about the amount of topic that we disagree with, the amount of stuff in this topic that we disagree with. Uh, you know, I did notice you pointed out how you don't sympathize with anarchist philosophy, and I, I mean, I already knew that, so sorry if there was anything in my video that made you feel the need to actually point that out. Well, it wasn't my intention. Um, and you asked about the rich, and if I'm humoring you, and... I mean, the rich are rich, and they have influence, 
but it's just so clear to me that they're going in all sorts of different directions. And if they were all marching in the same tune, we would have felt the sting of their oligarchy by this point. And the world as we know it now would actually look quite good by comparison. Uh, I mean, when you combine them all, it's just a frightening amount of money, ergo, ergo control, that they possess. And it's, it's funny, sometimes I wish that they, they were as organized as you think, in a way, because then those, um, <laughs> those globalist population reduction missions would actually get fulfilled, and we'd save a you know, few poor fuckers from having to be born. Um, but yeah, but I, I still can't help but view the average truther type rhetoric as a distraction to actual solutions. Um, and I guess I'm not going to have time to get into that, so maybe a, a bit more to finish up in the by the way that's upcoming this week. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's